This is a long passage with just a very short outline or underline, but you know what? We should read the whole thing. You never know. Sometimes the SAT is definitely setting us up to take shortcuts that we shouldn't be taking. So might as well read the whole thing, but don't worry too much about all the details, right? Uh, this is Mr. Verloc is navigating the London streets on his way to a meeting. Before reaching Knightsbridge, Mr. Verloc took a turn to the left out of the busy main thoroughfare, uproarious with the traffic of swaying omnibuses and trotting vans in the almost silent swift flow of hansoms, which are horse-drawn carriages. Under his hat, worn with a slight backward tilt, his hair had been carefully brushed into respectful sleekness, for his business was with an embassy. And Mr. Verloc, steady like a rock, a soft kind of rock, marched now along a street which could with every propriety be described as private. So I'm glad I'm not really too interested in all the details here because there's a lot of a lot of details and they're written in kind of a weird, you know, old timey way, right? This is uh, over 100 years old. So yeah, it's written in a way that's unusual to a modern ear. But let's let the choices worry about uh, what to think of this uh, soft kind of rock. Um, I mean, rocks aren't soft, so maybe this is some sort of an exception. That's kind of my dumb guess here. So A, it qualifies an earlier description of Mr. Verloc. Now, a lot of you can eliminate that choice because you don't know what qualifies means. So you think of qualify as a word that means um, like if you are qualified for a job. So you have experience, you have uh, the credentials, you have the knowledge to do something. You are qualified. But qualify also has the definition of kind of limits. It limits an earlier description of Mr. Verloc. It gives an exception, right? So to me, someone who knows what qualifies means, uh, it has that kind of um, it, 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 easy match, a strong word match. Um, so I'm already leaning towards this, but let's look at B, C, and D. What if we didn't know a word like qualifies, if it didn't stand out to us as an obvious synonym for kind of what we saw? Um, B, it emphasizes an internal struggle Mr. Verloc experiences. What? That little thing, a soft kind of rock, is an internal struggle? Now, some of you are going to try to turn this into like a metaphor, Okay, it's a soft rock because he's like hard, but he's also like debating within himself whether he's a hard rock or a soft rock and he's really conflicted about it. What are you talking about? It says he's steady like a rock. I, I mean, he's marching. He, he, he seems to be moving with intent here, not with conflict. So uh, even if we could maybe pull out some sort of uncertainty from these lines, that a soft kind of rock is not enough to, to justify that, right? So don't get all metaphorical. Don't get all symbolic. The lines are going to tell us what we they what they mean, right? So that there, we need hard evidence. We shouldn't have to interpret this in any deeper way. This is definitely a trap. See, it contrasts Mr. Verloc with his surroundings. Well, he's not surrounded by a rock. That part's a metaphor. That part you're allowed to be like, okay, they're using it like a, like a rock. It's a simile, literally. Um, and so uh, I don't know what, are they saying that his surroundings are hard in some way? They're saying he's steady like a rock. So those aren't his surroundings either. Uh, so I, this, again, they're not really, there's no contrast here, or at least not the contrast with his surroundings. And then D, it reveals a private opinion Mr. Verloc holds. Well, it doesn't say this is what he believes. This just seems like the narrator talking. So I don't know that. I don't know what's in his head. It would need to say he felt himself like a soft rock or something like that. So no, that doesn't make any sense. So I would hope that even if we weren't as confident with the word qualifies, we'd be able to do some process elimination here. And I do think that that's why sometimes you don't want to just pick like, you know, pick D because it's all that's left. Some people do that. You know, you don't like A, you don't like B or C, you're left with D and you don't even bother really reading it. You're just kind of like, oh, well, it must be right. But sometimes, occasionally, I end up eliminating all four answer choices because of something I don't like in each choice. And obviously one of them is right and I was wrong somewhere along the way, but that's why we don't want to just pick D by default, treat it like any other choice, and then go back and say, all right, I must have missed something. I must have misread something. Uh, let's see what we can do. But hopefully now, even if you were confused on this question, the word qualifies is something that you now know. It does have that other meaning about being qualified for job. But if you qualify an answer, it means you're kind of giving an exception. You're, you're limiting it. A, ca a caveat is another word. Caveat that you might want to know for that. So good words to know could appear on the vocab questions as well.